you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Since this channel began just under three years ago, I've made it a yearly regular to do a wishlist series detailing improvements and additions that I'd like to see in the next version of FIFA. In this video, I revisit that process today by starting my FIFA 21 wishlist series. This starts with a multiple part gameplay wishlist set of videos. Over the course of these instalments, I'm purely going to be talking about the actual gameplay itself and not any of the game modes. The likes of career mode and pro clubs etc will come a bit later on. Here's a look at the topics that I'll be going through over the course of the videos. We'll go through the attacking fundamentals today, discussing changes to possession and attacking. Then in part 2, we'll switch our focus onto defending and goalkeeping. In part 3, we'll move on to the likes of tactics and set pieces. And then we'll finish with visual improvements, viewer suggestions and more. It's worth bearing in mind that I understand not all of these additions and changes can be made in time for the next FIFA. The devs only get 9, 10, maybe 11 months of development time for each version and it's just not enough time to implement a complete makeover. However, if we could at least see some of these in time for FIFA 21, that would be a good start and the process in action. As always, be sure to let me know any improvements that you'd like to see in the comment section down below. But bear in mind that we may cover them at some point over the course of the series. And with all that being said, let's get into it. So first off, we'll begin with improvements to possession. What I want to see is more movement off the ball. Players are generally just too stagnant and lazy. For example, from kickoff, you pass it back and then the majority of your team is just standing there and nothing is moving forward. What you'll find in real games generally is either the team kicking off will pass it back to the centre back and then boot it up the field or the team will keep the ball and the opposition will move up to press them meaning that your players need to move in order to keep the ball and provide options. So let's have players moving a lot more and reacting to what's happening in the game. We can couple that in with my next suggestion which is more intelligent movement at the top end of the pitch. When you're entering into the attacking third, there's not a lot going on in the way of movement. Your players usually stand behind the opposition defenders so that you can't get the ball to them. I want to see more movement in the advanced areas. Playing players moving into those pockets of space more and picking up good positions. Not only is it more realistic, but it also allows for a more free-flowing possession game. Otherwise, it becomes extremely tough to replicate that total football style system that so many people enjoy to watch and play. Keeping with the topic of passing, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of passing selection. How many times have you had guys had a situation where you press to pass a ball to a certain place and it goes nowhere near where you've aimed the ball? It happens to me fairly regularly, even though I don't use manual passing meaning that it should be assisted. Now, if this was a purpose-built part of the game to replicate errors that happen in real life, then I absolutely wouldn't mind that, because yes, players will make the occasional mistake. Passes may sometimes be misplaced, but the problem is, whenever this happens, it's because it goes to another player of mine who just happens to be marked, or a bad option in general, meaning that it isn't the case of EA trying to replicate real error it's simply that the pass has gone to the completely wrong player due to problems with the assist or aiming system. And this is a part that certainly needs a bit of work because there isn't enough tangible behind it in terms of realism. It just creates more added frustration for the player. Fourth on the possession changes is the first touch. Now, it's fair to say that we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place in terms of first touch on video games because neither FIFA nor Pez can get this right. It's far too easy on FIFA to bring the ball down. The first touch error on the game is minimal in general. It means that when you play against other people in particular, they try unrealistic passes and touches, and they know it will come off every time. You can have the ball with your goalkeeper, drive a volley 70 yards up the pitch towards a winger running in behind, and he'll bring it down from 6 feet in the air, even though the ball is going over his head, and he should have no idea where it is. And then he'll somehow be able to take it into his stride and continue the run. 
meaning that the chances are he's now through on goal. Whilst we aren't covering it in this video, the same can be said for when you're defending as well. If you send a ball over the top of the defence, exactly the same situation. Defender facing his own goal, ball comes over his head, and even though he can't see it, he can jump up and bring it down from about six feet in the air. And then the attack breaks down. How many times do you see a defender go to control a ball and messes it up, allowing the attacker to pick it up and go through on goal? This doesn't happen on the game because of the lack of first touch error or confidence replicator. This for me has to change. It's just far too easy to exploit and is one of the reasons I get put off playing against other people and don't enjoy it anymore. You've got to stop giving people unrealistic pieces of gameplay that they can exploit to their advantage. I mentioned Pez a moment ago, and this is something that I think needs more focus and attention. Konami have clearly tried to combat this in Pez by implementing a lot of first touch error, which causes just as much unrealistic situations, because when, say, you feed a striker through one-on-one, -on -one, for example, he'll take a touch on the ground and it will loop up about two feet into the air, which is perhaps even more frustrating. It's not purely the technique either. Some players in real life just don't have the confidence to bring a ball down in the air. They hesitate and lunge at it or shy away from it, which in itself creates situations. The lack of confidence when controlling a ball should also be replicated, whether it's through the ball control attribute rating or by adding a new confidence rating. I think we're really looking for a middle ground between both games. Something that's going to get it just right. That would be absolutely massive for the game and a big positive. Finally, in the possession part, I want to talk about skill moves. It's something that has split opinion amongst players. For me, you have to find a balance. For example, the likes of body feints, stepovers are extremely common in football. Players of all levels can be found doing them. As such, they should be very easy to perform on the game. A quick wiggle of the right analog stick in the right direction should have you performing them effectively. However, the more advanced skill moves are still far too easy to perform in the game. The likes of Balassi flicks, Rainbow flicks, etc. are extremely rare. To see them happen even once in a year at all levels is hard to come by in itself. So for me, EA have to make them far harder to execute. It just creates an unrealistic and unenjoyable environment in my opinion. I'm looking for a true gameplay simulation. And if we had that, I truly believe there will be a lot of game controllers very thankful across the world because there will be a lot less of them getting thrown at the wall and smashed. Some people don't like it when I play the let's be realistic card. But if we don't create a simu realistic simulation, then how can we ever encourage more intelligent and logical thinking from players? How can we have a game where high tactical knowledge and clever thinking is rewarded? If I'm honest... I can't see EA ever doing anything about this. The devs clearly just aren't footballing purists and will listen to the thoughts of ultimate team players far too much. But for me, steps forward need to be taken to bring the game onto a new level. We have to move on from this flamboyant style of gameplay. That rounds off the possession section of this video. Now I want to talk about the attacking side of the game. Let's start off with crossing situations. With every FIFA that comes out, crossing becomes more and more irrelevant. It has reached a point now where, unless you have a man free at the back post, there's probably no point in sending one in. Crossing will always be a big part of the game. Of course, some teams do it more than others. And if you're simply just sending in aimless crosses into the box, then yes, chances are they're going to be dealt with by the defenders. But there are so many positives to creating and executing crossing situations. It's still a big part of the game when done right. You only have to look at a team like Liverpool riding high. Their most creative players are the two fullbacks, and a big part of their game is creating those crossing situations. I have a few suggestions that can improve crossing and ultimately make it more relevant within the game. One is the ball and crossing motion. When it comes to crossing, you can't get enough speed and whip on the cross. Some of the best and most dangerous crosses are the ones with a lot of whip applied to them, as well as accuracy. I mentioned Liverpool a moment ago. They don't have an effective aerial presence as part of the front three. So how do they combat that? 
Robertson and Alexander-Arnold whip their crosses, applying pace and accuracy so that whilst they're still at a fair height, they are harder for defenders to deal with and get the ball out of the danger areas. There isn't even a whipped cross available on FIFA. So my suggestion is to add a whipped cross button, such as LT slash L2 and X slash square together. And also add more pace and whip to general crosses. Because the generic crosses where you simply press or hold X or square are simply floated crosses. But there is already a lobbed cross button which creates those float crossing situations. So they essentially become fairly irrelevant. In addition to this, attackers also don't attack the crosses well enough. It isn't only about the cross, but also about the player on the receiving end as well. The targets in the box should be bursting a gut to get something on the ball. They should be making quick burst movement and throwing themselves at the ball in order to get on the end of it. Currently, they're too stagnant. It almost has to be pinpoint just to reach them. And that's the other major problem with why crosses have become almost so irrelevant. We need to see more desire and better movement from the targets, truly attacking the cross because the ball into the box is only half the battle. This leads nicely into my next improvement suggestion and that's heading technique. When players head the ball towards goal, in particular from corners, they don't have much control over it. They simply get their head to it resulting in a lot of headers going wayward and over the bar. From early stages, players are taught to head the ball downwards, get their head over the ball and aim downwards. This makes the headers more likely to hit the target and ultimately go in the net, because they can either go straight in or bounce and go in. Whereas if you're just heading it, when you're already at the height of the crossbar because you're jumping, it's far less likely to go in. Chances are it's going to go over because you aren't taking into account that added height from the jump. So for me, this needs to be replicated in-game to not only make it more realistic, but also to simply make those crossing situations more dangerous. Earlier, I spoke about whip and how crosses don't have enough of it. Well, this is also the same for shooting as well. Let's say you're outside of the 18-yard box on one side and want to curl one towards the far post with power. It's very hard to. You can try the finesse shot, but they don't have enough power. And if you simply hold down B or circle, there's no way it's curling towards the far post. Similar to crossing, there needs to be a button where you can apply whip to a shot in order to recreate those type of shots and situations more effectively. It's quite common to come across this type of strike in real life. Players on the edge of the box are very rarely directly in the middle of the goal and will therefore try and whip it across the other side to make the keeper have to dive and stretch. Think of any goal you've seen where the player is on one side outside of the area and curls one towards the far corner. They have whip, pace and spin applied to them all in one. This is what I want to see the devs implement into FIFA. On the topic of shooting, one-on-ones are also a part of the game which I feel like need some more attention to detail. When you go through one-on-one, -on -one, if you're going at full speed, then your player doesn't get the shot off well enough because he has less control. However, if you release the sprint button to regain that control, your player then goes too slow, allowing the opposition defenders to catch up to him. What educated strikers do in this situation is that yes, they stop sprinting in order to gain more control over the ball, but then they lengthen their stride so that they can make up for more of that loss of speed by covering more distance with every step. For me, this should be replicated in FIFA. I'd like the game to simply recognise when, si when that situation has developed and adjust the striker's movement accordingly. This would create fewer frustrating moments in those one-on-one -on -one situations and a more realistic depiction of what happens. So that would bring the first part of this wishlist series to a close. As I mentioned at the start of the video, if you have any suggestions in these areas which you feel I may have missed, then make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and you could feature in the final part of the gameplay wishlist series. Make sure to tune into the second part where we'll be exploring improvements to the defending and goalkeeping system for FIFA 21. I would ideally have liked to fit all of them into one video, but these wishes videos take longer than any of my other videos to create by far, 
and it's just easier logistically to split them into smaller parts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the bell so that you get notifications every time I upload and you can keep up to date with the likes of this wishlist series and my FIFA 20 tactics series. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and want to see more and on that note we're going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Come on.